Hello everybody. Welcome back. It is Sunday. It is March 10th and I'm here to talk to you about my stitching today. Two things. One, my bingo call for today I mentioned earlier was O Tomato. So I am thrilled to tell you that I met that goal. You can see what I've met. It's been crossed off each day, but this one was actually one of the shaded ones, so it's one that counts toward the bingo. I'm really tickled to get that one done. <laughs> so today, I started working on the next uh, band across in the pattern, and I thought, oh, I'd love to get this whole band stitched across here for the 100 stitches. And so I stitched the whole band, and when I did, there was a green thread that kind of continued on down, and I went ahead and continued it on down until I was going to just let my green thread run out. Well, here's where I got to. This is the band I wanted to stitch all the way across, and then when I got here with this green thread, it just ran all the way down here and came out to be the top of that little tomato. So then when I got the red on my needle, it was all of these little things that are tiny berries, it looks like, or um, tomato buds. And then it was the same color down here in the tomatoes. So I went and looked at my acrostics to see if I could use O Tomato in them. And I had used my O Tomato for um, my two 24 hours of cross stitch and the magazine monthly challenge group, but I hadn't used it in my daily 30 group But I did have a T That I had put something else there. I had put 13th colony But I was having to spell out the word to get 13th. So I thought oh, this is even better because O tomato has a T and It's the title so I don't even have to convert the number to words to make it work and that might be even more acceptable. So, I decided to substitute it in for my daily 30 group, and you know I need 300 stitches. So I kept the red on my needle, and I went ahead and finished the tomato. So not only did I finish the band, but I finished all of the stitching before the next group of words. So the next thing starts words again, and I'll stitch words down here. So 333 stitches was more than enough to meet the prompt in the Daily 30 group. So I believe, I'll double check on my trusty spreadsheet, but I am, yep, I am down to one letter remaining to get my Daily 30. I do have four letters in 24 hours of cross stitch yet to do, and I have three left in the Magazine Monthly Challenge group. But considering that it's just the 10th of the month, I think I'm doing really well. So, here's O Tomato. Good to go. I can put this one back up. Met that prompt. Actually met three prompts. So, I'm really tickled with that. And I love that it's moving along. I've actually finished the first page of the pattern. Um, maybe the second page of the pattern. And now I have only two pages left. The one I'm on and then one more. So, I'm at least halfway through, I would think. That'd be great. So, if you recall, I mentioned earlier, in an earlier segment, that I had this project to do for, with my library group, and that it involved taking a pattern that was a pixelated heart shape, and that I had to do something to it to make it where I could stitch it with the colors that I had and three additional colors. So I can't show you what I've done because I've marked this pattern up so much that you won't be able to tell what it is. But in this heart, instead of stitching it just as a plain heart, but staying true to all the uh, shapes, the diamond shapes, triangles and things, keeping those, um, I have done in, on my sketch here a scene that has a lake with a sailboat on it, trees, and um, green grass, and then the sky is going to be shades of blue. I'm hoping that it'll work out, 
and I'm thinking that while it's fresh on my mind, I may actually start it today, which will be another new start, <laughs> considering I just started Poinsettia Fairy this weekend. Uh, that's pretty ambitious. However, uh, I have to have my heart finished by May, and I don't have to have my Poinsettia Fairy finished until June, so I've got time to work on them. But I would love to get this one started and just see how hard it's going to be if I'm going to, you know, be able to do this pretty well. I stitched my edge of my fabric here and I had I had um, to tie off the ends there. Uh, but here's my palette. Here's my palette. My black is going to be for my sailboat. And I'm going to blend it with my darker green um, just to have some ground around the edge of the lake, possibly. Or I will use one of my new colors. I picked a brown because I have trees in my picture and I want to be able to do a tree trunk. And so I may use my brown for ground and I may use it for the tree trunk. And then for the sails on the boat, and the clouds in the sky, I'm gonna use this um, color here that's 3866. And then for the grasses, I'm gonna use the green, the light green and a blend of the two. So my new green I've added in is 3813. I thought they looked pretty together. I'm gonna use the orange for flags. I've got two poles of flags that are supposed to be flying next to the lake. And so parts of those flags will be in orange. And then in the water and the sky, I'll be using blue and this together for clouds. And I'm going to combine, I'm gonna use this one by itself, this one by itself, and I'm gonna combine the two so that I have three shades of blue to use. So I think that's how I'm gonna do it. You are allowed to add three colors. Those are my three colors. My blue is 825. So that's kind of what I'm thinking I'm going to try. So we'll see. So when I cut my pieces of fabric for my poinsettia fabric, for my poinsettia fairy, <laughs> um, I had one extra because I was able to get six pieces out of the piece of fabric that I purchased. And I've done the math and the heart should fit on here. So we shall see. I figure I'll go ahead and use it so that I get to use it up. So I'm going to put this on a Q-snap and get started on it. I'm not sure if we're supposed to show it or not, but I will keep you posted <laughs> on how I'm doing. And I hope it turns out okay. Anyway, ah, oh, that's the stitching for today. Uh, we, uh, my husband's off for a run right now. And as soon as he gets home, we'll be having supper. We're going to watch our one of our favorite shows tonight that are the winds, the young couple that are sailing. And uh, so I think that uh, I don't know how much more stitching I'll get done for today, but I'm definitely going to get a little start on my little heart picture and see how it goes. So I will uh, talk to you soon. And in the meantime, until we see each other again, happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is Dina, and today is March 11th, and it is Monday. Well, I'm here to tell you about my stitching today. <laughs> I have mentioned in a previous video, if you saw it, that we were issued a challenge at our stitching meetup. This past Saturday, we met and those of us who wanted to participate, and I think there were about 13 of us who did, um, brought floss to exchange um, that met five criteria. One was uh, a neutral, something you find in nature, a color you don't like, a, your favorite color, and something bright. And so you found a, a skein of floss that you felt met that criteria. You put each one in a separate envelope. They were all mixed up. We pulled out five, not knowing what we had. We opened them up to make sure we didn't have duplicates. 
those that did got to swap. And then we were given a free pattern, and this is the pattern. It's from the Fat Quarter Shop, and it's called Stitches from the Heart. And it is a heart shape that is made up of various triangles. And these colors are all pink, light, medium, dark pink, and then light, medium, and dark red. Um, so there were eight colors. So we exchanged five colors, and then we were told that we could put with our colors three more colors to make eight. Once we got home, <laughs> we could add to it. So my colors I shared with you in a previous um, video, but they were um, color 163, which is a green, color 3866, which is like an ecru color, this 721, which is an orange, 310, which is black, and a blue, 800. Interesting colors. They don't really go together that well. <laughs> but this is what I was going to have to get started with for my heart. So I added to it DMC number 825 to give me a dark blue to go with my light blue. I added in a 3813 to be a light green to go with my dark green. And then I felt like I needed a brown because once I decided what I was going to do with my pattern, I was going to need a brown. And so here's my brown. And it is 3882. So that just gives you a frame of reference. These are the colors I had to work with, and I had to use only these colors. I had been advised by one of the ladies who has done a challenge like this before, who was uh, the one organizing this. I had been advised that the best thing to do would be to take this freebie pattern, which is on the back here, um, and copy it in black and white so that I could see the shapes and not be distracted by the color. And that was worth its weight in gold. It really was. Do you remember a few years back when they came out with so many of the pictures that you would stare at it and you could see something in the picture? It was like a 3D image would just come out at you if you knew, if you could figure out how to look at it correctly. And that was the big thing is could you look at it correctly and find it? I love those. I used to go to the mall and look at all of them. And once I figured out how to do it, I could see everything. It was wonderful. Um, well, that is kind of how I looked at this pattern. And I began looking at it, especially in the black and white, because then I could actually see the shape and not the color. And I started looking at it and I thought, you know, what I'm seeing in there, I could turn into something that means something to me. I see a group of the triangles that form a square like a flag and I see shapes that look like they could be the tops of trees and I see one pair of triangles that I could turn into a sailboat on a lake. So I took my colors I have and this is what I stitched staying true to all of the shapes in the pattern. <coughs> Now, that doesn't mean that I didn't color some of the shapes in the same color of floss. I had to do that in a few places to make the design uh, come to fruition. Like I had to color multiple um, shapes to get the treetops. This might have been two different triangles and this may have been more than two and, and that sort of thing. But Here's my lake at the bottom. There's my little sailboat. Here's my flagpole with my three flags. 
there are four trees and you can see the tree trunks. That's what I needed the brown for. So then I did brown for the bank right next to the lake and then I blended. That was another tip Teresa gave me is that you could make more colors by blending them. So I blended brown and green to start moving from the dirt up into the grass. And then I stitched all the trees in the darkest green I had. And then I did the grass in a combination of my um, medium or light green, dark green. And then I even mixed the ecru with it to get the lightest shade of green over here. Then I went into the sky and I decided to make my sky a mirror of my water, the deepest water at the bottom. So I decided to make my sky the darkest color at the top. And because those dark blue flags were in there, I only blended the uh, light and dark blue. I didn't use this solid dark blue at the top. I did at the bottom, but I didn't at the top. But there's my heart and there's my picture that I formed out of those shapes in that original pattern. So I stayed true to the pattern, but not to the color scheme. <laughs> now, when I first got this, I have to tell you, I thought the challenge was that you stitched the pattern exactly as it was with your eight colors and you just take the symbols and do a conversion. You convert each symbol to one of your colors and that's how you stitch it. And I'm sure that that's how some people are going to do it because that's how I thought I was supposed to do it in the very beginning. But when Teresa and my friend Donna were talking about it and they were talking about making it into a picture, it blew my mind. I've never done anything like this. I don't know if you have or not, but I will tell you, it was quite a challenge and it it really made me stretch and it made me uh, feel uh, that I was trying to be more creative than I have ever been before. And I will tell you this, I'm not a designer. I don't, I don't think I have it in me. This took everything I had. <laughs> this took all of my imagination. But I will tell you something, I'm very pleased with it. I'm pleased with the outcome. Now, will I fully finish it and put it in my house? Probably not. But this is something that I would put in a journal about the experience and remind myself that I can take chances and I can stretch and I can learn new skills and I can be more creative if I want to be and I can see things the way I want to see them. I can look at patterns differently. I don't, I don't have to do it exactly the way that it's intended if that doesn't fit what I want. Now, if I fall in love with it and that's exactly what I want to do, that's perfectly fine. But this was a great, great challenge. And we actually have until May to finish them and bring them, we're bringing them back to share them. Um, but I already have an ornament I have to stitch for an exchange in June. And uh, I'm going to be going to a retreat, and then I'm going to be going on a vacation to meet friends uh, in uh, Tennessee, and I'll be gone for a week then. And so I have a lot coming up where I'm going to be away from home. And I'll be honest with you, once I saw this picture in my head, and I sketched it with colored pencils, not exactly the way it turned out, because I I'm, I'm changed things as I went. Um, but in the beginning, I had basically this design kind of colored in with my little pencils. And then I had written notes all around the margin as to what colors I meant for each little section to be. It was a mess. But when I got finished with it and I had it in my head what I wanted to do, I decided that if I put this away for very long at all, I would be totally lost. And I would forget what I was going to do or, you know, it just wasn't going to make sense to me because it was so crazy. Um, so, I started it yesterday 
Started stitching on it yesterday, and I did 427 stitches yesterday on it. And I was determined to get it to look like something before I shared it with you. So today, I started stitching again on it. Had a Zoom call tonight. I shared it with the ladies on my Zoom call because by that point, I was working up into the grass. And you could almost kind of see what it was going to be. And then I just kept stitching until I finished it. So I'm very tickled to have it done. It was a start and finish. Took me two days to do it. Now it took me two very long days to do it. <laughs> I've been stitching on this all day long. So I am delighted to have it where it is. And um, I will be happy to share mine when we get together in May, and I won't be embarrassed by it. It'll be okay. I feel like I met the challenge. So, um, you guys know I love I love to stitch for prompts, and I enjoy challenges like that, but I've never done anything quite this taxing on my creativity. And I do, I do want to say I, I am, I'm glad I did it. I'm not sure if I ever want to do another one. <laughs> like I said, it was a lot of work for me. It was a lot of mental work for me. But um, anyway, I think a lot of it is how you train your brain, you know, and I just don't, um, don't know that I want to. I don't know how much I would enjoy doing that on a permanent basis. But it was fun for this challenge. And I love it that our group is doing fun things and different things and um, keeps it interesting for, for, for those that want to participate. So there you go. Um, that is my start and finish. And the name of it again is Stitches from the Heart. And it's a freebie from the Fat Quarter Shop. So if you're interested in doing something similar, if you want to take that same challenge, um, go for it. It was a lot of, lot of interesting, uh, thought processes and a bit of work and a ton of stitching. Um, there were 2,016 stitches in here that I, that I counted and I may have missed some, but anyway, I tried to mark off each little triangle as I stitched it and count as I went, but you know, we'll see. Anyway, that's it. It's very late. I won't even tell you how late it is <laughs> because you might chastise me for staying up so late. But um, I got it done, and now I can rest easy and sleep. I, I don't have to be anywhere until 10 o'clock in the morning, so I can sleep in, which is great because I will need to do that. And um, tomorrow, I have to catch up again because... I let my bingo calls slide yesterday and today to get this done. So yesterday's bingo call uh, was, let me find it. Um, did I mark it? Yes, here it is. Love Abide. I have to put 100 stitches in Love Abide. And then I can move on to the call for tomorrow which is the one closest to a finish. And so I'll have to look around and decide what that is and work on it. <laughs> I, um, I don't know what that would be. Had I saved this one for tomorrow, I could have used it. But um, I'll find one. I'll look over there and figure out which one is closest to a finish, and I'll work on it next. So... Thanks for letting me share my fun adventure with you, <laughs> my bit of a challenge with you, and um, I hope you found it interesting. Anyway, I wanted to explain it to you so you'd know kind of what I was doing, because it doesn't look anything like the pattern other than the heart shape and the funny pixelation of all those triangles, but anyway, um, I hope you're having a great week. I certainly have been, and I will talk to you tomorrow, hopefully. Happy stitching, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. It is Tuesday. It's March 12th, 
and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my catch-up stitching. <laughs> I had let my um, bingo calls kind of lay over to the side um, the last couple of days because I was working on my stitch for my library challenge. And I finished that, so now I am trying to catch up on my calls. And I got the first one done, which was from yesterday. And the call was Love Abide. And the last time we spoke, I let you know I've decided to do the whole thing one over one, except I had started mine two over one um, because I really wanted it to be nice and thick. And now that I've started it that way, I have to continue it, I think. Um, and it's doing fine, so I'm just going to it, let it continue that way. But this is by Lottie Da. And today, I only had to stitch 100 stitches but I wanted to go ahead and finish off the branch that I was working on. And so I wound up getting 150 stitches and I finished one of the branches and started on a second one, a little offshoot of that branch. So when you first saw it, I think I had one leaf done. And I hadn't started the branch at all, so I did get that started today. So, 150 stitches in Love Abide, and um, this is being stitched on 28 count Lamb's Wool Joblin. So, um, it's very, very beautiful, and I'm enjoying it very much. So, the next call that was for today is for my whip closest to a finish. And my whip closest to a finish now is hard to determine because most of my smalls I have finished. So in looking at how many stitches I have to do to finish something, my whip closest to a finish is actually one of my most recent new starts, which is Poinsettia Fairy. So I'm gonna pick this back up today and get at least 100 stitches in this one today so that I am caught up on my bingo calls for the day. Well, I hope you've got a great week going. I, I hope it's been started. I spent part of my morning today talking with my friend Sandy from Florida because she and her husband and another couple uh, friends of ours from Alabama are gonna be converging with us in Sevierville, Tennessee, Pigeon Forge area the first week of April and we've rented a big cabin together and we're going to um, hang out there for a week. So what we were talking about today was food. What are we gonna do about cooking? The last time we met together, the three couples, we each took a meal um, and we cooked a big meal each. So that was three, three days and everybody brings their own breakfast and we brought sandwich stuff for lunch, you know, that kind of thing. And last year, last time we got together, I brought a big pot of chili uh, to go with the sandwiches, like grilled cheese sandwiches or something um, for lunch one of the days. And um, we had leftovers a lot. So when we had dinner one night, we'd have some leftovers the next day. And after we had cooked two or three days, we had lots of leftovers. And so it was kind of like a just potluck kind of thing, get what you want. We had tons of food, we had plenty of food. So this time, Sandy and I were talking about it and she, neither she nor I want to spend our whole vacation in the kitchen. And last time we got together, it was in the fall, it was cooler and we weren't able to get out and go as much. And so we didn't mind staying in the cabin cooking because it was too cold to really go do much of anything else. We did go to an apple, uh, farm where they pick the apples and you just go in and pick out the kinds you want and we we bought some stuff there had a little outing that day we went downtown and and things but this year it's going to be in april it will be at a time of the year where we can get out and go and um we are also staying close enough to pigeon forge that we could do some of the little touristy things you know if we want to go take in a show and that kind of thing so Sandy and I are proposing that we take our breakfast foods and soup and sandwiches for lunch. She's going to make a potato soup. I'm going to make a vegetable soup and we'll go from there. Um, 
and then we'll just go out and eat one meal a day, whether it be lunch or dinner, whatever we decide, depending on what we're doing for the day. So um, that she's all for that, and I'm all for that. So tonight, I have a scheduled call with the third couple, and I'm hoping to run this by them and see how they feel about it. I have a list of items to ask them if they're okay with it. Would they bring these things, you know, to to contribute? And if that's the case, then we'll have our meals taken care of, planned, and um, we'll see each other in about three weeks, which will be great. It's slipping up on us. So that'll be fun. You know I'll take some stitching. I don't know how much stitching time I'll have because we're going to get out and about a lot this time. But I always try to stitch when we're sitting at the cabin. So, you know, that, that turns out okay. Well, I'm going to grab my uh, floss for my poinsettia fairy, and I'm going to get started stitching on it. And I hope that I'm able to come back with you later tonight and show you my 100 stitches. <laughs> and then be caught up <laughs> for the day. So, um, I will talk to you soon, but in the meantime, until we speak again, happy stitching, everybody. Hello, my friends. How are you? It is the 13th of March. It's a Wednesday night, and um, we have been to choir practice and back home again. Um, so, um, I wanted to come and tell you about my stitching. Well, I had shared with you a while back now that I had gone off for a weekend of stitching and finishing um, with a group of ladies. And while we were there, we decided that we were going to do a Christmas ornament exchange. And I explained previously a little bit about that, but in case you didn't see that, I'll briefly tell you what we did. We went through the 2023... <laughs> Just Cross Stitch Christmas Ornament book, one at a time, and we picked an ornament that we wanted to stitch. We all had to pick something different, and um, that's what we chose to stitch. And in addition to stitching it ourselves, we're going to kit it up for each other so that when we get together uh, at our next uh, gathering in June, we are to swap our um our kitted projects. We will have stitched one and fully finished it to show what it's going to look like. And then um, we'll have a kit for each of the other four of us that are participating. So mine, I've showed you before, um, was the Poinsettia Fairy. Cute stitch. Really cute stitch. It's only 50 by 51 stitches so um, I was able to stitch it up in a couple of days. It's designed by Kathleen Berlew, B-E-R-L-E-W, and um, of course it's inside the, the magazine. So I went ahead and looked for the called for fabric because we're supposed to kit it up for our friends in the called for everything, fabric, floss, everything. And mine was kitted for DMC, which was great. I did look at that. <laughs> and um, mine was on a 28-count Joblin. And I enjoy Joblin. I don't mind it at all. I actually thought that I might have some white Lugana in my stash that was 28-count, but it wasn't. It was Ada. So I ordered Lugana. And I'm sorry, I ordered Joblin. 28 count antique white. Well, to get a piece to fit, the book called for a 10 by 10 square. But when I calculated up how small this ornament was going to be, and knowing that we're going to finish it as an ornament probably, I just didn't think I needed that big of a margin. And I could get one piece of fabric and cut it 9 by 9, and I could get everybody's piece in. And I even had an extra, which is what I stitched my last little uh, heart-shaped picture on that I shared with you recently. So, here's my 9x9 nine nine piece. You see? Plenty of margins for finishing that. It is hot off the Q-snap. Look at that. I haven't even pressed the lines out of it yet. But here it is. Isn't she precious? Oh, she's so beautiful. 
I just love her. I think she's adorable. So she's finished. So my stitching part is complete. And um, I think I ha had told y'all I was trying to do things a little bit ahead of time because we're going to be doing a little bit of traveling, um, going to the mountains with friends for a whole week. My husband's going to be gone for uh, several days for a uh, race in New Orleans. And I'll be here with Coco by myself, and I won't get as much stitching because I'll have to do all of her walks and things with her. And normally he does at least half of those. Um, so I'm anticipating not as much stitching time between now and June as I might have liked to get all this done. So I went ahead and got it done. So today, um, I had been taking tracking on a card how many lengths of my floss I was using and so today I actually cut and put on floss drops all the floss for the projects and the funny thing is like, her little eyes are one straight stitch of brown and that's the only place you use that brown at all so I cut my normal length of DMC that if I'm gonna use a loop start that's the length that I like to do and um, put one strand <laughs> a floss card for them uh, on a floss drop but you know that's okay because they'll have way more than they need for those two little eyes but that'll be okay so I'm excited I think it's gonna be fun and um, so now I have the fabric cut and zigzagged and I have my floss drops made and put together and um, I have an idea for a project bag that I want to do, and so I'll be working on that now. I'm not going to make project bags, but I am going to um, embellish one, I guess, would be the way to, to say it. And I'll share that with you probably after the exchange, because I want it to be a surprise. But since everybody knows what ornament everybody else is stitching, we had to know that so that we didn't pick, you know, the same one. I don't mind, I didn't mind showing you my finish because they all know that's what I'm gonna work on anyway. So, that is my latest stitching. And I did it again, I went ahead because I was on a roll and I wanted to finish this because I had all the colors out and I was marking off all the lengths of floss I was using and it was just, I wanted to get this done while I had all my record keeping and stuff out here together. And so I let my bingo stitch for today slide. I was supposed to stitch on Spring Quaker and I didn't do it. So, um, and now it's fairly late. It's too late, uh, it's 1130. I'm not gonna start it now. Um, and it's the one that I've had the frog on so bad the last time I tried to start it, um, that motif. So I'm gonna wait till I'm fresh in the morning and I'll work on that one. And then once I get 100 stitches at least in that, um, the next call for tomorrow is June Wordplay. And that'll be easy enough to do. So I'm looking forward to stitching on both of those tomorrow. I have two Zoom calls tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning I'll be Zooming with a couple of friends of mine and um, that I've I talked with once a month and we stitch together. And then tomorrow evening, I'll be talking to, uh, on a Zoom call with um, my friend Lori, Once Upon a Stitch, our friend Dee, and my friend Donna. And we try to talk about every couple of weeks. Um, at the end of the month, we talk about our acrostics and plans. And in the middle of the month, we sort of talk about how things are going, what we've got done, did we have to change anything? And it's just sort of um, a way to keep each other accountable for what we're doing. But more than that, it's just a time to visit and stitch together. Because we, we live so far apart, you know. Uh, Lori lives in New Jersey and Dee lives in New York. And Donna and I live in Georgia. So, you know, <laughs> that's the way we get together anyway, is over Zoom. So we'll be doing that tomorrow night. So I have two good opportunities to stitch tomorrow. So even if I just did my um, my bingo calls, one on one call, one on the other, 
I'd get it done. So I'm pretty sure I'll, that'll be okay. I do have a big errand tomorrow. My husband wants uh, to take me out to lunch and take me shopping, um, which I think will be great. And I'm looking forward to that. So I will um, be gone for a little bit during the middle of the day. Uh, but I'll have two good stitching times designated. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, I'm gonna let you get on with what you're doing. It's late, I'm gonna go to bed. Um, uh, Coco's probably already there. My plans are to come back sometime and share with you what I've been stitching tomorrow. Since I'm on a Zoom call that usually goes fairly late, I may only get to show you the first part of my day and I may have to wait and show you my stitching from tomorrow night on the next day. But that's okay. I'll try to fit it all in for you. I do have a quick story to tell you. My husband took Coco to the park today. It was a beautiful day here. The sun was shining. It was a lovely warm day. And um, they went to the park. And my husband sent me a text and he said, Remind me to show you the video when I discovered Coco knows how to read. So my husband said they were at this trail and there's a sign letting you know which way to the parking lot. And they were uh, supposedly, you know, through with their hike and they were ready to get back to their car. And Coco actually stops, looks up as if she is reading the sign and then goes in the right direction. <laughs> the direction that the sign tells you to go. It was hysterical. Now, we know that Coco knows her way around this park because they go there a lot. She knew the way. Uh, but for whatever reason, that sign caught her attention, and it does look just like she's reading it. So I'll share that with you at the end of the video. <laughs> so our dog Coco has learned to read. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed that little uh, tidbit of humor, and I hope you're having a great week. And I hope I have some more stitching to share with you later this week. Happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It is Thursday, the 14th of March, and I am about 30 minutes away from getting to Zoom with a couple of my friends to stitch together and catch up on what's been going on for the past month, and I cannot wait. But I am tickled to be able to let you know that in the meantime, while I've been waiting for our phone call, I have stitched on my Spring Quakers. This was my bingo call from yesterday. And I am working on this large motif right here. And I'm just doing it 100 stitches at a time, <laughs> working on these prompts. So today, I actually got 117 stitches because I wanted to finish the little curly cue that I was on, this one here. So I finished this one, and then I did this one today. So that was 117 stitches, enough for my bingo prompt of 100 stitches. And so I got that one taken care of. But as you can see, this little shape here is gonna be repeated on these two corners, and then the whole motif is filled in around them. But I figured that would be the easiest thing to do, at least get this, side of it done and I can fill in the colors if I want to and then go off from there. But anyway, I was tickled to death to get that met before my phone call because now I can work on today's bingo call on my phone call, which is the June word play. And that's great because that'll be easy to see, easy to work on while I'm talking with someone else. And if I want to, um, after that, I'm thinking that I may pull out my Jingle Jolly Joy and work on it today because it is on my year of whips. I had said recently that I thought my sampler for all seasons is on my year of whips, but it's not. Uh, but my Jingle Jolly Joy is, and my Miss Christmas Eve is on my year of whips. So I don't have to finish either of those two to qualify for the drawing, but um, I still would like to, um, at least Jingle Jolly Joy, even if I don't finish Miss Christmas Eve this year, I would like to finish Jingle Jolly Joy. And so I'll put some extra stitches in it maybe today if I have time. But remember, today is 
uh, the day that my husband and I have to go uh, in near Atlanta and uh, we have to go to the Mall of Georgia and um, we're going to do a couple of errands today. I would really like to put my sister's birthday presents in the mail today. I have them all wrapped and packaged up, ready to go. And uh, so I um, would like to get that done today as well. So I have quite a few errands I need to do. Um, and then tonight I get to Zoom with some additional stitchers. And so maybe that is when I'll work on Jingle Jolly Joy. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. And as I get progress, I'll come back and share it with you. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's a little bit later today on the 14th of March, and I am happy to let you know I got caught up on my bingo. So today's call was for June word play. That's my June word play. And the last time I stitched on it, I had done these two words here. So today, I stitched 126 stitches in this, and some of them will be hard for you to see because they're white. They're those little white, what I think are supposed to be fireflies, because it says catching fireflies. So I think those are supposed to be little fireflies going across there. And then I started the next row of flowers, flower pot. There'll be two more of these little flowers and then there'll be a word that's turned up this way and um, which will cut it almost in half. So anyway, 126 stitches. I actually hit 100, went ahead and posted it in my group because I thought we were headed to lunch right away. And then my husband said he really would like to take Coco for just a short walk up the street. I had taken her this morning, but it was pretty early when she wanted to go. And the day is beautiful. And so I, I thought that would be wonderful because we're going to be going shopping here in a few minutes. And we'll be gone for a little while. So he's taking her for a quick walk. So I ran back up here and I grabbed my next couple of colors. And I put the next 26 stitches in, which was this little flower right here. And so now I'm gonna put it away because I would like to look and do some planning for what I wanna stitch on. I checked this morning. I said I was gonna do 40 plan starts this year and I have already started 12 of them, but I've also started four unplanned starts <laughs> for different reasons and, um, and all of them are great and um, they're back. Okay, thanks. So I think what I'd like to do when I get back from our shopping trip is to look at what I want to stitch. Um, do I wanna go ahead and start something else of my planned starts since I've made room for all these extras in here or do I want another extra start? Um, I was on a Zoom call this morning with two of my stitching friends and Mary suggested that I start something springish because spring, the spring equinox is coming up here in a few days. And I said, oh, that's a great idea. And I do have an Easter piece on my whip go board called lamb that I might could start. So I wanna look at that, but I wanna just look at, I guess I wanna look at everything I had in my list of planned starts and put all of my new purchases that I've had since then on the table and see if I need to swap anything out um, or if I just want to add to it. So I'll probably do that maybe this afternoon. So I'm going to head out. We're going to go have lunch and uh, run to the mall and run to the post office. And so I'll be back shortly and I hope to have more stitching to share with you later. Happy stitching everybody. Hello everybody, welcome. It is the 15th of March and I am here to tell you what I've been stitching on for the last couple of days. Well, I decided I wanted to stitch on something for Easter. And I had on my whip go board an Easter project that I wanted to start whenever it was called, but it hasn't been called yet. So this was Lamb by Shepherd's Bush and I wanted to stitch that for Easter. Now they did it on 10 count, but I just wanted to do it on um, about a 14 count Ada that I had in my stash. 
when I went to um, a retreat last year, one of the ladies there was a fabric dyer, and she came around and put a little tiny folded up piece of her samples uh, at each person's place where you were sitting. She had it tied up with a little ribbon, and it was just really sweet. And it was a very small piece, but when I was kitting up my projects for my whip board, my whip go board, I found this little piece of Ada, and I thought, I think it'll be perfect for lamb, and it is. So it's a purple with little brown splotches all over it. And I stitched lamb on there, and but I noticed that because of the darker color of the fabric, it wasn't showing up as crisp as I wanted. So I just backstitched it. I pulled out uh, color $37.99, because it's kind of a dark, dark, dark gray. And I thought that'll be that'll be perfect. So I batched back stitched the whole thing in that and I did my lettering in that as well. Have you any wool? And I've got my buttons on and everything. So it is completely finished. It's done. So I'm very happy with it. Now this will be a pillow, so I have plenty of room to stitch on it, to sew it up into a pillow, but there you go. Isn't that precious? So, Lamb by Shepherd's Bush was my finish today. I'm excited. So, I will put all my threads away. I've got threads from a couple of projects now I need to put back into my bobbin box and have it ready for the next thing that I want to pull off. And I will take my whip go board and mark this complete, <laughs> which seems to be what I'm doing. And that'll be fine. But um, anyway, I'm excited about it. I think it turned out really cute. I really like it on that fabric now that I've backstitched it because I can really see it. And uh, I think that's going to be a cute little Easter pillow for me to add in to my decor this year. It'll be great. Okay, I'm going to let you get back to what you were doing. I woke up with uh, a lot of congestion this morning, not feeling well. Um, anyway, I've taken some medicine, and I feel better, but I don't sound any better. My husband's trying to get me to let him uh, take me to the med stop, but I've already taken a COVID test, and I don't have COVID, so I think I'm going to just chalk it up to allergies and go from there. But... I'll keep you posted. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's all from, from here. We're going to run get a bite to eat. Um, I didn't feel well this morning, so I didn't really eat. And I need to get something to eat. So uh, I think we're going to go to Chick-fil-A, maybe get some soup. And um, I like their chicken noodle soup, so we'll do that. And then uh, we get to watch Survivor. We, we weren't able to watch it last night because I was Zooming with friends last night. I was working on my lamb uh, project. And so I can't wait to send them pictures of it today to let them see I finished it. So I will do that here in a minute. But anyway, I hope you are having a great, great month of stitching this month of March. I certainly have. And... Um, now I can update my list of planned starts. I, I looked at that yesterday and I had 12 planned starts that I had already done and four unplanned starts. So this will make 13 planned starts. And if you look at the fact that it's a third of the way through the year, I am right on target for my 40 new starts for the year. So looking forward to that. Is I'm, I'm doing well making progress. So enjoy your stitching. I hope that you are um, having a lot of time to stitch and that you're enjoying everything you're working on. So until next time, happy stitching. Hello, I'm here to let you know about my stitching later today. My bingo call today was for Jingle Jolly Joy. So I pulled it out and I put 152 stitches in it. 
And as you can see, I got a lot more done in Santa's beard, mouth, face. I've got his mustache completed. So that's doing well. I'm moving along. I probably could finish this if I had a really good stitching session on it. I could finish this square. And then I have to go down and do one more square, which will be joy, the joy section. And um, it's a snowman. So that's the stitching for my bingo today. Now the call for tomorrow has already come out. And my call for tomorrow is number four. And that is a most recent start. So I'll have to go back now and look and see. I think that's going to be June wordplay. I think that's going to be my June wordplay because everything I've started since then I've finished. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's what I'll be working on tomorrow. So I'll pull it out, put some more stitches in it, and then um, go from there. So that's all the news fit to print. <laughs> I'm going to say good night. I'm going to go down and go to bed with Coco. I'm feeling a little better. Uh, this morning I was feeling pretty poorly. Um, but I'm hoping that tomorrow I feel even better. Because if I don't, my husband's taking me to the med stop. So he's threatened me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. But I hope between now and the next time I get to talk to you that you have a great time of stitching. Good night, everybody.